In this video we're going to return to the problem of fitting a carbon 1s envelope where data are formed from multiple carbon peaks all in different chemical environments. A data envelope such as this one represents highly correlated signal and to separate such signal into component peaks would be quite difficult unless you had additional information. It's extremely helpful here we have an understanding of the underlying material that was used to create the sample that was then analyzed by XPS. So we anticipate that the oxygen appears as a pair of atoms against a single nitrogen and we think there should be six carbon atoms, at least there may be six carbon atoms contributing to this envelope we see here. Well the oxygen and the nitrogen both conform in the sense that we've got a single nitrogen peak for two oxygen peaks so we might expect six carbon peaks here however it's worth confirming that this is indeed the case by looking at a survey measurement and seeing the proportions of these different peaks in terms of the survey data so we've got oxygen nitrogen and carbon and these should be in the ratio of two to one to six so we can look at these by creating a quantification based on regions using the element library. So we'll find these peaks. So these indicate where the peaks are. And we can create, but I'm not going to use the default region table because I'd like to illustrate a little bit more than the quantification here. So I'm going to go to the regions property page, having deleted the automatically created table and I'm going to add a table that includes the relative sensitivity factors. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to illustrate that these are Schofield cross sections and not Kratos RSFs and the reason for this is because these data have been acquired relative to a national physical laboratory instrument and so the transmission function is an absolute transmission function and is not a relative transmission function that would be typical of a Kratos system. So if we use Schofield cross-sections, we must also verify that the regions are being corrected for an escape depth correction. So we are making an assumption that we have a bulk material here and this seems to be a reasonable assumption. So what we're going to do is change from an escape depth correction of none to an escape depth correction of effective attenuation length. So that's where it says none. We'll change that to effective attenuation length and then we'll apply that to these VAMAS blocks that were selected here in the right hand side. So now we have an effective attenuation length correction and the result is an atomic concentration calculation based on a transmission function that is a national physical laboratory relative transmission function and the angular distribution was 60 degrees but these are all s orbitals so there's no modification to the RSFs if they were p d or f orbitals then there would be a modification based on an angle of 60 degrees but in this instance there is no correction required so we now have an atomic concentration indicating the amount of these materials. So rather than simply relying on the atomic concentration to understand the relative proportions I can use a text annotation where I'm going to select the formula and I want to display a live formula and we will use the active VAMAS block. In other words data that are shown here in the active tile will be used to create the ratio formula that will now appear when I press the apply button. So we've got annotation that represents a table giving us the atomic concentration and annotation that is a chemical formula using the information that's gathered from these regions and presented as ratios. Now I can actually improve the way these are presented if I then look at the oxygen in the tag field and I say star 2. We now have all of these values relative to the oxygen as if there are two atoms. So we've got 6.82 for the carbon and less than unity for the nitrogen. So it's possible that we have two oxygen, one nitrogen, and it's looking more probable that we have more carbon than the expected six. 
As an alternative to looking at a survey quantification, we could look at the high resolution data. And we've already performed a peak fit here. So what we need to do is create a region for the carbon. And once we've got a region, since we already have regions here and here, what we can do is select these and and on the report spec property page we'll use a standard report and just perform a quantification based on regions using these selected high resolution spectra. Now I've got a set of configuration files set up so we can see the information that can be gathered from a set of regions so these are the names that were assigned to the regions from the regions from these high resolution spectra we can see that we've got a, a quantification that is supporting the quantification from the survey spectrum this report is showing that the RSFs in the library because they were s orbitals are identical before and after correction for angular distribution correction Let me close these windows there's also a, a total RSF that are applied to the areas that are calculating these atomic concentrations the transmission function is reported in this report. I've also got effective attenuation for the mean free path correction, the escape depth correction, and then we get a bit more information over here in terms of position for its half maximum and the raw area. So this was a report that was created on the basis of a configuration file. It is giving us the information now from the selected VAMAS blocks here and we're getting a similar story from the high resolution data as we did from the survey data that there's slightly more carbon than we would have expected for the material in question so when we construct a peak model for these data it would involve more than six component peaks so we'll now gather the information that we know about this sample in order to construct a peak model for this carbon 1s envelope so we know that the relationship between the oxygen, nitrogen and carbon suggests that we have close to six but a little bit more than six carbon atoms corresponding to these oxygen and nitrogen. So we need six component peaks and we'll use this model here at least in the first instance to construct this peak model and then perhaps add one more to represent the signal that doesn't belong to this kind of structure. Now, there's an element of guesswork here because we really don't know how these peaks all form beneath this envelope here. But the best one we can target will be this first one here. And that would correspond to carbon double bonded to oxygen and single bonded to oxygen. And that would be the binding energy or the offset of the binding energy relative to these other peaks that suggest that this peak is in fact this carbon atom here. Well, let's add some component peaks. So a background was already prepared on these data when we quantified with respect to these other high resolution spectra we created this region and if we now add a component peak let's just reduce the Gaussian contribution and we'll also reduce the deformation of the wings so that we end up with a peak that might be appropriate for this carbon double bonded to oxygen and then since we have a carbon single bonded to oxygen and these are all part and parcel of the same pattern within this material then another guess would be to add a second peak and we'll use a similar line shape and this second peak would correspond to the carbon single bonded to oxygen and then we've got hydrogen and carbon again so this one is offset in binding energy with a characteristic offset that might look something like this so you have to understand that these are educated guesses based on other materials mostly from the polymer database then we have potentially got a one-to-one -one relationship between these peaks so what we'll do is we'll enforce this by introducing a constraint in column B saying A star 1. So now these two peaks have the same area. We've got nitrogen triple bonded to carbon which is single bonded to carbon again. And 
from similar materials with this type of structure in the Beamson and Briggs polymer database, they introduce two peaks that are very close in binding energy for this type of structure. And since Beamson and Briggs have two peaks that are close in binding energy, we'll place two peaks here with the same area. And we will represent this structure here by these two peaks. And again, we can say that they ought to have the same intensity as the other peaks that would belong to this structure. So I'm entering A star 1 for all of these. So these all have the same area. And then we've got a peak here, which is a carbon bonded to carbon and three hydrogens. So this CH3 is probably towards the lower binding energy side. And then we have another structure over here with a, a carbon atom, which equally may have a binding energy that is characteristic but to a lower binding energy than these peaks. So we'll add two more peaks. And these two peaks, once again, all should be the same. So we'll say A star 1, A star 1. So the peak that is controlling all of these peaks in terms of intensity is this first peak that stands all alone. And then finally, I need to add a peak. And this one corresponds to the excess of what we would expect over and above this, because our survey spectrum and our high resolution spectra indicated we've got more carbon than the oxygen and nitrogen. So I've added a peak here. And at this point, the, the synthetic envelope is not too dissimilar from the measured spectrum. So let's fit. And we end up with a peak fit. Let's put on a residual. And we'll delete the inset tile that suggests that we've got a decent fit to the data. Although we do have a good reproduction of the data using this synthetic envelope, it's not a guarantee that you actually have produced a meaningful peak model. The best chance of producing the peak model is to do a comparison to other material that are similar, such as what I was using from the Beams and Briggs database to make an assertion about these two peaks, for example, related to the nitrogen and then a pair of peaks here related to the oxygen. The others are less certain. We've got a different amount of this unknown material here, and maybe we need to fit this a, a different way in order to achieve a more meaningful chemical state. So I keep on adjusting these peaks and fitting again in order to try and obtain the best fit for the data but I'm really interested in producing not just the best fit, I'm interested in also the relationship between these peaks and the peaks in the oxygen and the nitrogen. So the fit, although it's improving, it's not necessarily true that it's producing the best possible outcome. So we will now test these peaks by comparing them against the oxygen and the nitrogen. And we can do this on the report spec property page using the components option in the standard report. When I select this button, I get a range of quantification tables, different configuration files that I can then select. And it produces a report which suggests that we have a reasonable relationship between the carbon, the oxygen, and the nitrogen that would have been consistent with the material that we started with. So that's some comfort, but this requires further research, far more research than I've put into con constructing this peak model to ensure that these are genuinely peaks that represent the chemistry of the material that were analyzed by XPS.